fall off. We have to do gymnastics. It is time for gymnastics. I know you're so tired. We are gonna work on handstands and some conditioning to keep our muscles really strong today. Come with me, friends. Okay, the very first thing we're gonna work on on our handstand practice is tiny little baby handstands. Now, we've already done these in the warm-up, so they should be familiar to you. But what we're gonna start with is our elbows straight. So we want really strong arms. We call them pushy arms, not mushy arms, okay? So pushy arms, really strong. We're gonna come down and we're gonna take our down dog or bear crawl position. And then we're gonna take one leg up in the air. Now, the knee is straight, not bent. So we don't want any crazy knees. And then from there, we're just gonna try to hop and practice keeping our elbows straight. So we go hop, 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 hop. Now, the safety thing that we need to think about is if you're not on a gymnastics floor, you don't wanna do too big of a hop because if I fell over, it would not feel very good. So we're gonna practice tiny little baby, baby, baby kicks. So I've done it on one leg. That's the leg that feels good for me. I think it's good to try the other leg too. So let's try the other leg. This is the leg that feels good for me to stick up in the air, but I'm gonna switch it to this leg and do just a couple tiny little baby handstands too. Now, the next thing that you can practice is baby handstands. So that was tiny little baby handstands, but baby handstands are a little bit harder. So we're gonna actually start in our gymnastics lunge position. In our gymnastics lunge position, you want your front leg bent and your back leg is straight. The goal is a straight line from your heel all the way up to your wrists. So we're gonna bring our arms up and then we have pushy arms, not mushy arms. So elbows are locked out. We're gonna lean on that front leg. Now, the safety thing, very, very, very important. Don't kick too strong. We're gonna try to keep this leg just a little bit lifting up off the ground, okay? So arms are up, and then we're gonna go lift, and then back up. Lift, and then back up. Your arms are glued to your ears. We don't want the arms doing anything crazy or going out. They're gonna be glued right to your ears. You guys try it at home. Okay, we're going to learn how to do a belly facing handstand, which is a little bit safer to do when you're learning your handstands. So all you need is a wall and your straight elbows. Don't forget those. So we're gonna come back into our down dog bear crawl position. Make sure your elbows are straight. If your elbows are bending, then you're not ready to do this. So then you're gonna take one leg and put it up on the wall behind you. And then you're gonna put the other leg on the wall behind you. And you're gonna make sure your elbows are straight. Maybe we can count to 10 like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When you step down, you want to land on your feet. Good job. Okay, so we've practiced our belly facing handstands, which is where your belly faces the wall, and then you step up to your handstand. Now, once you've mastered that, we're gonna practice our kick to handstand against the wall. You're gonna need a grown up to spot you on the very first time you do this. So go ahead and grab your big person, maybe a big brother or big sister or your mom and dad. Maybe grandma or grandpa. Probably not your cat this time. So I'm gonna use Jeremy to demonstrate and I'm gonna be his grown up and I'm gonna show you how to spot. So he's gonna do a down dog facing the wall but this time the bum is facing away from the wall. The belly is facing away. And then the grown up is gonna take their hand and they're gonna put it right on your shoulder. So it might look like this, right? If I, this is my grown up hand, I would put it right here. So that way, when Jeremy kicks up, he takes one leg and he sticks it up in the air and then he practices his hop, hop, hop. Oh, he made it. Oh. The grown up, can spot your shoulder and they can spot your hips too. So that way you can practice and you don't forget your smushy arms and land on your head. Jeremy, that's not a good handstand. Okay, 
To practice our cartwheels, we're gonna start with a teddy bear cartwheel, which is where our bum kind of stays low and our legs stay down. It's a good way to practice strong arms for cartwheels. So I'm gonna use Isabella. She's gonna remind me where halfway is. So I'm gonna take the leg that I like in the front. I like my left leg in the front. And I'm gonna bring my arms up. And then, because this leg is in the front, my hands go this way. Now, if I liked this leg in the front, then my hands would go this way. But I like this leg in the front, so my hands are gonna go this way. So I'm gonna go arms up, arms down, up, arms up. It's a little tricky. Let's try it again. Arms up. Arms down, up. You want your belly button to switch sides. So you'll see when I start, my belly button is facing this way. And then when I finish, my belly button is facing this way. A cartwheel flips you sideways. Now, when you're ready, thanks Isabella. When you're ready to kick up to a real cartwheel, are you ready? You have to do those over and over and over again, and your belly button has to flip the right way. When you're ready to do a real cartwheel, you have to keep your legs really straight. So you can practice noticing where your belly button is facing. I'm gonna step a little bit behind my mat so that I don't mess it up. Notice where your belly button is facing. Start in your gymnastics lunge position. So your front leg is bent, and, or I'm sorry, your, your back leg is straight, and your front leg is bent. And then when you kick, you have straight legs. And then you finish with your belly button flipping the other way. Okay, we're gonna work on our jump stickets. So just like our broad jumps that we practiced before, we're going forward, so we wanna swing our arms forward. So arms go behind us, and then we're in our jump ready position. We swing our arms forward and we stick it. When you stick it, you want your arms straight your back is flat and your knees are bent. Then you come back up. You don't wanna land on your knees, especially when you're practicing gymnastics at home. This is not a squishy surface. When we do big jump stickets at the gym, sometimes it's fun to flop on our knees. Won't be very fun to flop on your knees over here because this is concrete. You try it. Okay, now that you've gotten so good at your jump stickets, we're ready to run into a jump sticket. So question for you guys at home. When you're running, are you on one foot or are you on two feet? Yeah, you're on one foot. So when we run, I'll do it in slow motion first. We run, we have one foot at a time. Then when we get ready to do our stick it, we're gonna bring our legs together and then stick it. It's a little tricky, but this is how we do it on the tumble track, and this is how we do it on the vault, and how you would run into a forward roll. So, let's practice it. We're gonna go run, feet together, stick it. I'll do it one more time for you. Run, feet together, stick it. You try. All right, we're gonna work on something called a half turn, but I like to call it hello, goodbye. So you have to be looking at something. So I'm choosing to look at my gymnastics students here. So when we do our half turn, we go from belly buttons facing this way to belly buttons facing this way, the other way, and we land in a stick it. So to do that, you're gonna swing your arms and then you're gonna fly through the air and then you stick it. You swing your arms the way you're going. So I like to flip this way. Some people like to flip this way. Because I like to flip this way, I'm gonna swing my arms this way. So it looks like this. Hello, goodbye. Hello, goodbye. That was my weird side. You should try both. Okay, now we're gonna do a plank. A plank is super important, but super, super hard. So it's gonna make your belly muscles strong and your arms strong. When we do a plank, we want our shoulders and our wrists in a line. And you also want your body in a straight line. That's why it's called a plank. No saggy bones and no down dog. 
see if you can hold this for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was hard for me. Okay, now we're gonna work on our belly muscles to get those stronger. So we are going to do a boat pose. Now, the kids that are in my class have super, super strong belly muscles and they hold this for 30 seconds. Today, we're gonna just hold it for 10. So you're gonna sit up really tall, like you're the queen. And then you're gonna bring your arms out, make your belly muscles strong. Make sure you don't have saggy arms, strong arms. Lift, lift, ooh, that's hard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome job. The last thing that we're gonna do is a ladybug balance. So we're gonna lay on our backs. You're gonna pull your knees into your belly until your tailbone lifts up, but not all the way, that's too easy. So you're gonna pull your knees in until your bum lifts up off the ground. Then you're gonna lift your arms up in the air. And then you can pull your arms back in line with your ears. Oh, that's so tricky. Let's try to hold that for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I just got a really good idea. We could also, poor Rosie hasn't been able to be involved in this whole day. So I'm gonna use her and we're gonna do a little game. I like to play with my kids. So we're gonna take Rosie and we're gonna pinch her on her toes. And then we're gonna go up in the air and we're gonna give Rosie a hug, touch her to the ground, hook her on your toes, bring them down and up and down and up. How many of those can you do? Bye friends. <laughs>